Hey guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts. Welcome to my craft room. Today is the much awaited and applauded, yay, we're gonna learn how to knit dishcloths today. Now remember, you can follow along with me, but if you're a brand new knitter, you might not be able to learn to knit just by watching this. You might have to look up on YouTube and look at some how to knit videos. I'm going to go slow and I'm gonna do the best I can, but I'm not a knit teacher. I just follow patterns. I might have a couple tips or tricks for myself, but it's not gonna be like my quilting videos, my scrappy sewing videos, where I have all those extra little tidbits. I kinda of just follow the patterns for the most part and do what I'm told. Sometimes I veer off a little bit, of course, cause that's just how my personality is when I'm crafting, but I try my best to follow the patterns. So we're gonna go slow. And apparently I like to say so a lot today. So just ignore me, I'm sorry about that. I've made two different styles of dishcloths before. I, well, I've made a variety, but out of this style, grandma's favorite dishcloth is when you start at one end and you knit diagonally and increase till you get to a certain number of stitches, and then you decrease till you get to the same numbers here. So if you started with four, you end with four. You start with 12, you end with 12, however it works for you. This one, as you can see, has some lace work on the side. It has some holes in the border, and that's a pretty standard for this type of dishcloth. This one doesn't have any holes because when you're doing this and you're increasing, it's really easy. It's mindless, but when you decrease, okay, this is gonna sound confusing, but you have to increase before you decrease. So you're doing one increase and two decreases, and I always tend to forget. I just go mindless and I end up with this really, what is it, like a rhombus or something, strange shape. So I kind of altered the pattern a little and I make it this way. So I'm gonna show you how to do it without the holes. Grandma's favorite dishcloth is a free pattern on Ravelry. If you go into Ravelry, I have a link down below to my actual page of it. But when you search in there for knit dishcloths, you're gonna find so many patterns. This is the basic one that most people start with knitting. I'm gonna show you this version. I have my project bag all set up. This is pretty much my permanent dishcloth project bag. And in this bag, I don't take it out with me usually, and but I got a little, I don't have a handle, but I can hold it by a tab. This is generally something I keep at home. Now I may take it if I have no other projects, but you've seen my Whip It Wednesdays, I always have a project. In here, I keep my size five needles. And I always have these in here. These don't go anywhere else. These are only for knitting dishcloths. I don't think I've ever knit anything else on them. These are metal. You can use plastic. You can use wood. Wood tends to make your stitching a little slower. It grabs the yarn so it doesn't slip off. Metal needles tend to be a little slicker. Cotton is already kind of a sticky fiber so it doesn't slide that much anyway. But if you wanna go really, really slow, you can use wood needles and cotton yarn and you definitely won't have to worry about your stitches falling off. The yarn I'm using today is my favorite from Michaels, my Premier Home. The color that I'm using today is Gray Splash. As I said before, it calls for normally a size eight needle. I like to use a size five, just because I like a tighter dishcloth. I also keep a pair of scissors in there. I have a stitch marker on these scissors just because I happen to have them one day with the scissors and I didn't want to lose it, so I stuck it on there. But the project we're using does not call for them, but it does make noise. So the first thing we're going to, have to do is usually when you hold your skein this way with the label so it's up and down properly. The beginning yarn should be coming out there. Sometimes they have the tail from out here that's stuck in there. And if it were to be, you would see this going in like this. So you'd wanna pull this out first, but this doesn't have anything crazy like that. It's usually with your bigger skeins. But now we're gonna hopefully be able to find the end in here. I just kinda of put my finger and my thumb in there I grab the center and I pull it out. Now, see it's kind of tough, so I didn't probably grab the beginning. And what's gonna happen, sometimes you go to the other end. Yeah, of course. So you're gonna learn about something called yarn barf. And yarn barf is when you're trying to find the end and you get all this. That is yarn barf. What you do with yarn barf is you just kind of take it and wrap it around the end of your skein. That way it doesn't get tangled. 
There's a lot. I'm sorry. It happens. Happens more than anyone likes to know. But you see, this is kind of tangled up in here. That's why I couldn't quite get to it. If you're lucky, it'll be sticking out like this when you get your skein, but you're never that lucky. There's all kinds of videos on how to find the end. So that's how complicated it can be for such a simple thing. We're gonna start off with a slip knot. I like to take, oh, about anywhere from four to six inches and leave a tail end. We're gonna go ahead and weave this in at the end. But I take it and I wrap it over my fingers, my two fingers, and then I wrap it again, but I go to the back. I take my needle, I go under the first and over the second, and I just kind of pick that stitch out like that, see? And I gently pull this. I don't pull it super tight because we need to be able to get our needle in there to make the next stitch. Let me show you another way to make a slip knot. You can just take your end here, give yourself your four to six inches, make a loop. See that loop? I just cross this yarn over that yarn. I'm gonna put my finger under there and I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna grab this tail and then what part that's going to the ball. And there you go. And there's your slip knot. Just pop that on your needle and gently pop it on your needle and just gently pull it down so it's a little bit tight. Now I've got a lot of extra yarn here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it in my usual way. Now yarn like this is made up of plies, which means it has several pieces, several strands of yarn that's plied together, similar to a rope. And as with cotton and I'm knitting, it tends to loosen up and this gets a little bit frayed, which makes it hard to put in the needle. And if it keeps fraying, you have to trim off the edge to get it into the needle. And if it keeps fraying, you're gonna run out of your tail. I do this with all of my yarn and all of my projects. I just like to put a little knot on the end close to the end as I can get it. So if this frays and goes crazy, when I go to weave my ends in, I'll just trim it right here, cut it off with scissors, just pass that knot and it'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna be knitting right-handed. My empty needle, my working needle will always be in my right hand. All the stitches that I'm going to be knitting will be on this needle. And I will be knitting them from that needle to this needle. When this needle's full, it'll transfer over. I recommend that if you're left-handed that you go ahead and teach yourself how to knit right-handed. When you first start knitting, it's going to be extremely awkward no matter you're right-handed or left-handed. And it's going to take a while to get that muscle memory to teach your hands how to knit. Instead of trying to look into a mirror and figuring out how to do it backwards all the time, it's easier to just go ahead and train your right hand on how to knit. Plus, it's really good for your brain if you're left-handed to do things right-handed. They say if you're left-handed, brush your teeth right-handed and if you know you're right-handed brush your teeth left-handed every other day and it'll help build up that extra muscle in your brain and it just keeps you active longer anything we can do to keep our brain thinking straight and being active is always a good thing so I've got my slip knot on there I'm just gonna tighten it up just a little and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my right hand needle and I'm gonna go ahead and put it into there. Let's zoom this in a little bit. I think that should do us good, right? So I have my, this is my left hand needle with my stitch sitting on top. My right hand needle is just gonna go into this loop and it's gonna sit underneath like an X, okay? This is my tail. Try not to knit with your tail because then you're going to end up out of yarn and you're not going to be able to do anything else. You want to make sure you always have the yarn that's coming from your ball that I have off screen here. Experienced knitters without paying attention knit with the tail all the time and you just have to start over. So if you don't want to start over, try to pay attention to what you're doing. Okay. So I'm holding this so my needles stay together and I'm taking my yarn and I'm just going to wrap it over so it's over my right hand needle and I'm going to just kind of you tilt your needle a little and you want to pull that 
See, I still have my yarn that was wrapped over and I pulled it out and then I go like this. You see my loop? Take my left hand needle and I put it into the back of that loop and I pull this needle out and then you're going to tighten this loop down. Okay? When I first started learning how to cast on, I believe this is called the cable cast on, but I'm not 100% sure. It might just be the way I do things. I found out that I was doing it wrong. The correct way is to take your needle and go in between these two stitches all the way through the back, wrap your stitch or your, your yarn around for your stitch, and then you go pull it through between those two needles, okay, and pull it out a little, and once again you're going to go through the back and just slide it on your needle, and then scooch it up. And you don't want it to be super tight, okay? You want a little space in between each stitch. Now the way I was doing it, and it's the way I still do it because nothing falls apart. It gives me the same pretty much effect and I'll show you the way the why I like this way. When I go right into this stitch and I wrap around and I pull it through, okay, just like we've done all the way along, and then I put it on here. I put this right hand needle underneath my left one and I don't pull it out. And then when I snug down this yarn, it is now over two needles. So that stitch is never gonna be too tight because it's already, you know, it's double the size that it should be. But it's not gonna be too loose either because it's gonna naturally tighten up just a little bit as we're knitting. And since my, my, my needle is already in that stitch, then I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap my yarn around it again, pull it through, and when I put it back on, and then I just go like this. And I never have to pull my needle out and put my needle in. And as I said, I can never go too tight because it's always the size of two needles. And when we're done, we're only gonna knit with one needle, right? So I have double the size. Now I only need three stitches. So let's go ahead and we'll start back over again and we'll do it one more time. For most people, this is one of the things that can be the hardest part, just getting started. The actual knitting, once you get a rhythm of it, because you're going to be practicing the knit stitch hundreds of times while we're making this dishcloth, but you're only going to cast on once. So you only cast on per project once, well, over and over if you mess it up, but you know, you're only casting on a project once, so you're not getting a lot of project, pro uh, you're not getting a lot of practice. So I put my right needle in the stitch and I'm underneath my left needle wrap my yarn just over the top. I'm not wrapping it around and round. Just laying it over the top and bringing it to the bottom and I'm kind of holding this firm. And I'm just going to scoop my needle back and then I'm going to tip the tip, tilt the tip and pull it out. Take my left needle, go in from the back side of the stitch, put my right needle back under the left needle into the X position and tighten this down. Once more, around the needle, through the stitch, pull out the slack, through the back, and pull it down. So now I have three stitches on my needles, and that's all we need to start this dishwash, dishcloth. Because remember, we're going diagonal, we're starting at the narrow end, and we're getting wider. Now that we have our three stitches, we're gonna go ahead and start working our pattern. Now we're gonna have to increase so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by knitting our first stitch. I'm just gonna stick, just like when we were putting the cast on, I'm gonna stick my needle right in here, just into the front part of the leg. You see you have the second part back there, and I'm going underneath my left needle, making sure I'm not knitting with the tail, so I, I keep the tail out of the way. I make sure I pull the yarn so that I've got the longest part that's attached to the ball. I go ahead and yarn over, and I pull it through. Now your first few rows are gonna be a little bit awkward. They usually tend to look a little bit ugly and they're kind of fiddly to do, but once you get going, it makes it a lot easier. Once the yarn starts weighing down and pulling on itself, then it just, it just goes smoother. So I pulled it through like we would if we were gonna cast on and instead of going like this, I have my two needles touching and I'm just going to take, this is the needle that, the stitch that was on my left needle and I have the new one on here. I'm just going to slide that one off, okay? This loop 
right here. This was a stitch that was on the left needle, and now here's our new stitch. I'm not pulling it super tight, just snug, because once again, we're gonna need to get a needle in there later. Now, on the second stitch right here, this is the center stitch, we only have three right now, we're gonna do a knit front and back, and that'll give us two stitches out of one. So here we go when we knit like we normally would, into the front, yarn over, right? Pull it through. Now before we take that stitch off, we kind of spin it around and we take our needle and we're gonna go into that back stitch that I showed you. Like I said, it's, it's gonna be easier if you guys go ahead and just search how to do a knit front and back or how to do an increase in knitting and let one of those professional gals show you exactly how to do it. They have better camera setups, they have better ways of doing it. But I'm just gonna go through to where I have the back of the stitch on and I still haven't taken that stitch off. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna pull it through. And now I can slide that stitch off. And see, instead of having two stitches, now I have three. And then I go ahead and I knit that last stitch. So last row, we had three stitches and now we have four. This one is, it, sometimes the cotton separates, but we have four stitches. Switch it over, put it in my left hand, and then take my empty needle on my right. Now the way this pattern's gonna go is you're going to knit, remember this is the one that's gonna give us without a hole. We're going to knit into the first stitch, slide it off, knit into the second stitch, slide it off. Now on our third stitch, we're gonna knit into the front and into the back and then slide it off. And that's our increase. And then we're gonna knit however many stitches are left in the row. This one only has one. Switch it back over, empty needle on the right hand, all your stitches over here. We're still not knitting with our tail, right? So we're gonna knit two stitches, just like you would. And on the third stitch, we're gonna knit in the front and we're gonna knit into the back. And now we have two stitches left and we just knit those normally. We're just gonna keep continuing this row over and over and over again until we get to the number of stitches we want. Now remember I said that I am doing Remember I told you I like to do 41, 42, usually 42. If I fold this in half, as we're knitting and increasing it, that's just gonna look like this. And then when I get to this point, I'll start decreasing it. This gives me about a seven inch for the way I knit, on the size needles I knit, with the yarn that I use. Every one is going to be different. It's a dishcloth. You can knit it any size you want. I like to kind of have it just a little bit bigger than my hand. I wear a size medium glove just to give you kind of a bit of a reference. So since I wash dishes right handed, you can use this a little bit bigger if you want to make it like a washcloth. They're usually eight inches, so you might have to go a little bit more. What? Get a kitty cat out here going crazy. Which one? Mocha. Well, let her in. Come on. I know, I hear her meowing, but you know, I'm recording. Come on, hurry up. I'm only doing this video for the fourth time. Come on, puppy. Come on. She wants crunchies, Daddy. Nope, she's in. Okay, close the door. Thank you. I, I thought she wanted crunchies, too. Oh, okay. So whatever size you end up making it, it's going to be okay. And if your first one doesn't quite come out square and it's kind of rhombushy, triangly, mushy, mushy, don't worry about it. It's still going to wash your dishes perfectly fine. And each time you do it, you're going to be able to figure out what you did wrong and you're going to improve and it's going to get nicer every time. Sometimes it's a little bit loose in the beginning. Sometimes it's too tight. Knitting takes practice. It really does. It takes repetition over and over and over again. Okay, so who remembers what our rows are? What our stitch pattern? Our stitch pattern is, exactly, we're gonna knit our first two stitches. Then in the next one, we are going to knit in the front and the back and continue to knit across.
it doesn't look like much, but it, it the, the rows add up really quick. So I'll just go ahead and knit here for just a little bit. Then I'll pause the video so that I can go ahead and get to the center point. Then I'll get it to my 42 stitches and I'll show you how I decrease it. Knit two, knit front and back, knit across. Let me grab a different color yarn and see if that's going to make it any better to be visible. I went ahead and grabbed this green yarn. It's, uh, I believe the color is Pickle Dish. And I think that's going to be a lot easier for us to see, right? So let me go ahead and knit another row. So the problem with knitting is you kind of hold it. The way I knit is I hold it and I'm hiding everything from you. That's why I suggest that you go ahead and watch one of the fancy people that have the good lighting and the different yarn and needles and they're really professional at doing it. But if you want to just catch, I really appreciate you guys wanting to see how I do it, of course. But yeah. Sometimes it's just better to go and see what a professional's got going on. I don't have too many tips and tricks. But see, it's already starting to look really nice. It's, it's looking like a dishcloth now. When you first start knitting, it just kind of looks like a mess. And the way we're doing it is we're knitting the two stitches and then we're doing the, the knit front and back. So you're giving yourself kind of this border on it. You can really start to see it sticking out on just on one side and then the other side it's kind of concave. But it, it makes a nice little border. And when you're all done, you can kind of see the way it frames around your dishcloth. But anyway, let's go ahead and knit a little bit before I catch you up to the center when we decrease. So here's our first two stitches. Now here's the one we're gonna knit in the front and back. So we're gonna knit in the front. If you kind of, when you pull it through, can you see that stitch hanging out back there now? So you just pull this through and then you're going to swoop right back around to the back and go in between those stitches, the two legs of your stitch there, and just grab the back of that stitch. And then we can just go ahead and knit all the way across. That's why I said this is a really a no-brainer. Once you get it under control and you figure out what you're doing and you get your hands to cooperate, you can just, there, there's just you know one row you're only doing something special on the third stitch and after that you're just going to knit all the way across try not to pull your needle out there we go so i said the metal needles are really slippery and our two stitches once again we knit in the front don't take it off. Scoot around to the back in between the two legs. Grab the back of that stitch and knit that. And then we can take it off. And that's our increase. I gotta tell you, this is, I think, the fourth time I've tried filming this video. The first two times I told you exactly the wrong way to do most of the stitch. It'd been a while since I've knit a dishcloth and I got myself confused. I probably shouldn't try to film five videos in one day all the time like this. Because it kind of rattles your brain and gets you confused, right? So I specifically got this green yarn because I knew this would be easier to see on screen. But after I'd already knit with this once, I wanted to show you how to pull your yarn out. So I had to grab a new screen, a new skein. And then of course, you know, gray on gray, I thought it was going to be nice and bright. It looked good, but no, that's okay. We've got the green now and everything is fine. Non-professional knitter here.
front, grab the back, slide it off. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause now. Hopefully I'm going to like the way this video looks and I can keep knitting until I get to the halfway point. And then I can show you how to decrease it. I think decreasing you're probably gonna like a lot better. It's a lot easier than trying to knit into the front and back of a stitch. Though once you get going, by the end of the dishcloth, you should have those stitches down pat because you'll have done it so many times. All right, let me go ahead and pause here, work on this for a little bit, and then I'll be right back. I'm happy to say without any distractions, I was able to get to the halfway point in about a half an hour. So if nobody's pestering me and I don't get bored, I can knit a dishcloth in an hour. I just get sidetracked real easy. Now there's a couple things you can do. Some people, when they get to the halfway point, they knit three rows, one, two, three, with no increasing, just straight up knitting. And it kind of gives it, I don't think I, I don't usually do it, but it kind of, it helps give it a little bit more of the point or a little bit rounded edge. I don't know. I've just never really done it because a lot of times I will pick it up and put it down and I'll forget how many rows. So what I like to do is when I get to the halfway point, I just knit one row straight across. No increasing, no decreasing, just straight knitting. So even if you guys don't learn anything from watching this video, I really hope you go ahead and watch a couple other videos that teach you how to knit. I find it very relaxing. I know it's not for everybody, of course. Some people are really interested in it and I would love for you to give it a try and not to get discouraged right away. It does take a while to get the swing of it and the hang of it, especially if you're doing other crafts. There's only so much time in the day to learn something new. But this constant repetition, I just, I find it relaxing. It settles my mind and it relieves stress. If I'm sitting at a doctor's appointment, I definitely like to have a little knitting. Even if I take something simple like a dishcloth, it just helps me relax before I have to go back and see the doctor. All right, so there's my one plain row of knitting. Now, since we've increased every row, one row at a time going up, we need to decrease one time in a row going back. I think it's an easier hand movement, so you might find this is a little bit easier to pick up than the increasing. Once again, we're gonna stick with our first two stitches, our knit. Now to decrease it, we wanna take two stitches and turn them into one. So instead of going into the first, we're gonna go into the second and the first at the same time. You see how I have both of them on one? I still have the back loop, I haven't touched them. I'm just going through the front ones like you normally do when you knit. I'm gonna wrap my yarn around and I'm gonna pull it through both of those loops. See that? And then I'm gonna slide both those stitches off. And then once again, I'm gonna to knit to the end. I'll probably speed this up. All right, so there's the end. Now, once again, we're just gonna keep repeating that decrease row over and over again, just like we did with the beginning in our increased row. Once again, we knit two. We take our needle and we go to the second stitch. We grab that first leg, go into it, and we also go into the first stitch. So both of them are on our needle there yarn over and pull it through and knock them off the needle, okay? So we're just gonna keep doing that until we get down to three stitches and then I will show you how to bind it off, okay?
almost done. Just a couple more rows and this will finish it off. I'm down to five stitches. So I just thought I would just knit a little bit more with you. So I hope everyone's enjoyed this video. I hope you were able to get a little bit of information out of it and that my big hands weren't in the way for too much. Okay, let's look at this now. We are down to four, okay? Now, if we knit two, that means we're going to knit this last two together as one. So what I'm going to do, is just like when we did our beginning, and instead of knitting front and back, when we had three stitches, we knit front and back on the center one instead of two over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit this one. I'm going to knit these two together. And then I'm going to knit the final one. And that's going to give me my three stitches, okay? Now we only have three stitches to show the bind off here, so we're only going to be able to see it once. If you need more information, you're just going to go ahead to search YouTube for bind off, or the next time I bind off a project. I don't have anything in the near future that's going to be bound off really soon, so it might be best to just go ahead and search YouTube for bind off. But what we do is we knit one stitch, leave it on the right needle. Knit a second stitch, leave that on the right needle. Then you take the first stitch and you grab it. Hold on to this second one because we're going to bring the first one over the second one. So we're going to bring that second one through like if we were knitting it and drop that stitch off the needle. So there's our first stitch. We have taken it off the needle and we have bound that off. So we have one stitch here and one stitch here. We're going to knit again so that we have two stitches on this needle. We're going to grab this first one and we're going to leave it over the second and pull that through. And that leaves us one stitch. I just go ahead and pull that loop a little large there so I don't drop it. Find my scissors. Leave myself a little tail. I go ahead and cut my yarn off. Okay, so then this is the tail where I just cut it off. I just bring it up through the loop. bring it up through the loop and then I just slowly pull it until it tightens it up and then boom there we go you see how it's kind of a little bit off we just you just tug on the sides a little bit and it straightens it up like I said it's cotton yarn but holding it in my hands and mushing it so it changes so I'm going to go ahead and link up top to how to weave in the ends. There's no sense showing you again when I already have a video that does that. Thank you guys for putting up with this. I hope it has helped anyone who was interested. Once again, more questions, go ahead and leave them down below. And until the next video, you guys have a great day.